So first of all, Dawn, you need to explain why we've had to run up that steep hill this morning. How did you get from maths to running? Oh, maths teacher, actually, a colleague that um, I worked with at Chichester High School. Uh, she kept nagging me and nagging me to go running uh, to Park Run Hatch on a Saturday morning. And eventually I joined in uh, and I really enjoyed it. So. Lovely. Now tell me more about Park Run because one of my favourite memories of this rather unusual year was that assembly that we did where yeah. you, you led the whole school on the park run. So what are the principles of park run you think make it so well suited to children? Uh, well, I think it's well suited to anybody really because um, anybody can take part. You know, it's like teaching maths. Anybody, anybody can do it really. It's just at your own level. Um, and I really like the different people that come to park run and the fact that you don't have to be a superb runner. So it's totally inclusive no matter what your background and it costs absolutely nothing but it's really really good for you. So is maths a subject that lends itself well to teaching in a lockdown? Um, yes, uh, well it has become really um, easy to teach really and to a lockdown. It's nowhere near as um, creative um, and impulsive but the resources that I've bought I'm really pleased with and the way that students are engaging with them. Uh, but I do miss actually just like running on a tangent you know and going off doing different things with students being creative and that's what I'm looking forward to getting back to. It's all a bit dry. I mean how do you make maths fun? It's not something every student finds easy. Well I don't really think it's about the maths, it's more to do with your attitude and relationships with students. You know so I'm sure my year eights will admit the fact that I was singing all by myself this morning um, you know because nobody needed my help so you know, you make it fun just by your interactions with the students, your relationships with the students. Yeah, and, and I, uh, I saw some photos too. It was Fancy Dress Friday last week, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yeah. So well, what was the craziest outfit and what were you wearing? Oh, um, I just came as a uh, Roman centurion, just uh, like that. Like you do? I felt, you know, that that was, I was feeling on Friday morning. Someone else came as a scuba diver, someone else came as a skier. There were a variety of quite active things going on so it was good. Yeah. Brilliant, well that's a lot of different interests wrapped up in one lesson so what was it that brought you to maths specifically? Why why that subject? Um, I, actually I was asked to teach maths, it kind of chose me rather than anything. I mean I was a primary teacher originally and um, it just seemed that I was good at teaching maths which I was quite surprised about because I never thought it was a strength, I didn't particularly like it as a subject at school myself um, but it seemed that a lot of people go into teaching maths because they're mathematicians, they really like the subject. But actually most students aren't mathematicians, you'll get a few. But uh, most students are just people that are wanting to, uh, are needing to use maths. And I seem to be quite good at um, explaining things, you know, just normally yeah. rather than in a mathematical way. And that reminds me of a conversation we had. I think one of my first conversations with you was about the frustration when children feel that they can't do maths. Mm. Um, well, one thing that you know, I would like to say about maths is that kind of um, narrative that all maths teachers know about people saying oh, I'm not very good at maths and parents saying they're not very good at maths and other teachers saying they're not very good at maths. It's, it's really quite you know, a negative thing to do and we're, you know, no one's absolute, well, some people are superb at maths but most people have got good bits of maths and you know, not so good bits of maths and everybody can do maths to their own level and always can improve. Um, and I've really, really enjoyed the fact that I will show students something that looks so difficult and maths can be really intimidating. And then you just say, well, let's break it down and show them how to do it before they know, you know, at the end of the lesson, they're doing something they're like, wow, I can't believe I could do that. Yeah, I've really noticed that. Out of it. I've lost, you know, I've lost count of the number of times people have said, what a breath of fresh air you've been and how much their children are enjoying maths, which is a lovely thing to hear. And of course, we're about to go into year nine and through towards GCSE. That's a path where you know well, your background is secondary. So I wonder if you've got any tips for us. You know, what's the best way to take students through to 16 in maths? What do they need to achieve the best results? Well, they need a good relationship with their teacher um, that, you know, and, and each other so they can support each other. They need to be self-disciplined and they need to be, you know, be committed really to it because um, there are lots of base skills that they need to have picked up. They, they need to realise that it's not just year 10 and year 11 that there are important years. Everything that they, they do lower down the school builds up these really important um, foundations that they can then rely upon and their GCSE students. Um, and they need to be independent workers, you know, self-motivated, but also really determined not to give in because some students don't know the tables when they're in year five and think they'll never do it. But actually it might be year eight that suddenly that's the skill that comes to them. So just never give up. And, and obviously in the time you've been here, you've made some changes in the maths department. Can you think of one thing that's made a difference right the way through the school, from the youngest age through to the older so, ones? Um, talking with all the teachers throughout the school that teach maths, we've got this real continuity now about the skills that are being taught, making sure we don't miss anything. 
and also we really talk to each other about different levels of expertise. It must see a huge advantage, you mentioned the continuity, but bringing a student through from the youngest age when they're first picking up maths. Uh, there's not going to be that transitional gap where there is normally, where they go from year six and they drop down a little bit when they're in year seven. Um, that I think we can avoid at our school, we can just keep it going right through. Okay Dawn, now while we're on the run, let's uh, a little bit of a quiz for you here, some 50-50 questions. When we're ready, odd or even? Odd, please, because I think I am a little bit odd. Okay, silly question this one, maybe running or walking? Oh, de definitely running, you can run with your family, run with your friends, run with your head teacher. Thought you might say that. Um, north or south? A um, bit of both, I'd love the north because I'm from Sheffield and I used to live in the south of Spain. I thought that was a Sheffield question. Okay, summer or winter? Uh, summer because I'd really see the sun coming. Nice, okay, um, mathematical question here, pie or mm, pie? Oh, I think I'm going to go for apple pie. I can't believe that, that feels like, that feels wrong somehow. What about a parallelogram or a dodecahedron? Mm -hmm. Depends, yeah, the week I'm going parallelogram today. Nice, okay, why parallelograms? Oh, the great big kids to draw, honestly, yeah. as you will. Love it. <laughs> serious mathematicians here, serious. Um, your favourite, Carol Vorderman or Rachel Riley? Oh, uh, Jaffrey Carroll. Okay, some proper mathematicians now. Isaac Newton or Alan Turing? Alan Turing, please. Mm. Tell me why, Alan Turing? Well, they did a lot for the national effort, didn't they? And also, he's very good at code breaking, and there's a superb story that people should learn from. Fantastic. And this is not a rude question about your age or anything, but abacus or calculator? Oh, uh, definitely a scientific calculator, preferably in pale blue. Fantastic. Right, are you ready then? Last one back to schools in detention. 